Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergzer Arcade at BergzerArcade.net and here we are back again with another video for our character controller. So let's go ahead and we'll just jump straight into Unity. And I wanted to start off by taking a look at the walk animation. Uh, there's a few people that were missing a couple settings. And thanks to MK Anderson who took the time to figure out what the offset for the root transform rotation was. Uh, we now have our average velocity for the X at zero and the same as Y. Now, I'm just going to quickly reiterate from last video, if it's if either a positive or negative value here for your X, it's going to veer slightly to the left or the right. Now, very small numbers really aren't going to matter that much as your, your character is going to be turning in game anyway. But on the Y, uh, a slight positive or negative is going to lead to you either starting to float up into the air or potentially sink down under the ground. And we don't want that. So the Y is really important to make sure you can get that to zero. X, you know, if you get 0 0.001, you can live with it. No one's really going to know unless you just have a game where you just walk straight for like miles and miles and miles. Then you'll notice it. But anyway, here are all my settings. I'm going to go ahead, put them up on screen here. Go ahead, copy them down, and it should work for you as well. So today we're going to go ahead and create a script. So I'm going to create my folder. And we'll, of course, make it a C-sharp script. And I'm going to call it movement. I'm going to go ahead and open that up in your IDE of choice. And I'll go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger so we can see it. And I like just to get rid of everything when I start. And there's a couple of tributes I want to put up at the top here. The first one is disallow multiple components. And the reason why I do this is because I don't want uh, this script to be accidentally attached more than once to one game object. And we're just going to come down in here. Now I'm going to want to make sure that I have a reference to my animator. So that's the first thing we're going to grab. And I'm just going to call it anim. And since we know we're going to need a reference to it, let's go ahead and make sure that it's there. So I'm going to do a require component. And the type of will be animator. Now we've covered these before. Uh, if you need a link, I'll go ahead and leave one down below. And I'm going to come down to my awake. And we'll set that reference. So we'll just go ahead, get the component. The component we want is our animator. And that's all we have to do for that. Now, in order to move, I want this to be done during our update. So we'll need that. And the way I want it to work is I just want to be able to capture my turning. You know, stuff like jumping. You know, moving forward and back. But I don't want to write all that code inside of my update. I want to keep the update pretty lean as far as the code. So I'm just going to use function calls. So let's come down here. We already have the animation to move, so we'll start with that one. I don't see these needing to be public, so we're going to make it private. And with that, we can go ahead and put the call in here. And the really cool thing now is that we can just go ahead and grab that reference to the animator, which is anim dot set float. And if we go back into Unity and take a look here, I'll open up the animator. This float here, which by the way, I'm going to set to zero for, for the default. Uh, this float here is what we want to adjust. And I want to adjust it as the player's well, hitting the input keys, whatever input keys you want to specify. For now, I'm just going to stick to you know the default vertical axis, so moving forward and backwards. So what I'll do is just go set float tell it what string I want to manipulate, which was, I believe it was forward, right? Let me just quickly check that. Yep, it might even be good as we start getting more and more uh, strings over there to go ahead and actually set them up here. But let's see what happens as we start adding more and more to our, to our game, or at least our character controller. So now we're gonna grab the input dot get access. 
Actually, I might want get access raw here. It really comes down to whether or not you want Unity to go ahead and actually apply some of that smoothing and everything else to it. I've always used get access, but I think get access might give us a little more precision. We'll go ahead, we'll try them both. And of course, we have to tell what axis we want. And I'm just going to get the vertical. I'll save that off. Three spaces. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead, get rid of this. We've already done this one. Let's go ahead, we'll come in, take our character that we have started up here. I'm going to come back into not the asset store, but the actual scene itself. I've got him selected. We'll go ahead, we'll drop that on. And if we didn't have an animator on it, it would actually go ahead and add one for us, but it already comes with one. Let's just do a quick demonstration of that. If we went ahead and let's just go make a cube. And we drop this on. Boom, it puts the animator on and uh, the script for us. Great. But we just want to add it here. I'm not sure why I took it back off. <laughs> anyway, so we'll go ahead, we'll hit play. Nothing happened in the console, right? No. No blow ups. Let's go ahead. And now when we hit, well at least the way mine is set up is W to move forward. And S to move back, it should move, but it's not. What did I do wrong? I must have spelt vertical wrong. And everything looks right, we're moving forward. That is the, the correct, yeah. Input actions for all vertical spelt right. Uh, we're calling it ah. On well, grand fashion, I made a typo. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're gonna call it from update. Now up a date. Uh, I'll come back in. Actually, I'm gonna leave the animator open. I like to see it. So now when we hit W, we see it moves over, and we let go, and it comes back. Now there are some other things. Like I said, we do have to go over the mechanism system a bit more, but I want to get something up and running really quick and then we can come back. So I'm going to focus in on him. So we go ahead, moves, we let go, he stops. That's uh, pretty sweet, isn't it? I'm not sure what that little red ball is. Anyway, now of course it's not going backwards yet, but that's fine because I actually want to have a different animation for that. But we can actually go ahead and just use that walk animation and just play it backwards. But we'll do that in a different video. I want to actually have a walk animation. So I think next up, uh, we have our animations that came with the package we downloaded. And I'm going to have to go watch the video, the first one, see exactly which one it was. And I'm going to want to keep track of, maybe put a little um, read it in here, or read me. Just so I know what package these animations came from. But for this video, I just wanted to start getting the scripting done and show you how to do it. And uh, you guys are free to go ahead and do this on your own. I will be developing it more and more. Uh, this is going to be my Friday series. So for those that are wondering when new videos are going to come out for the character controller, those will be Fridays. Until we're done. Until we at least get that first good working version done. Then I might have Fridays for something else. Then, you know, there's just so many things to work on. I like to do it in chunks. But anyway. Hopefully this helps you out, and I'll see you over in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'd be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>